And now, today's adventure of Outer Scope One, from a pile of planks. It's a good sort of day to build something. It's a building sort of day. Edgar! Hey, Edgar! What do you want to do today, Edgar? Can we come over to your yard? Oh, hi, Eleanor. And Henry? Sure, come on over. What are you doing with those boards, anyway? They're leftovers my dad gave me. I think we ought to build something with them. Something special. Something special? Like what, Edgar? I don't know yet, but something. Hey, we could use them to play we're explorers. We could build a wooden shelter in the wilderness. Come on. But where can we explore around here? Yeah, that's a problem. There's nothing new to explore. That's true. Uh. Is that heavy? <clears throat> yes, it is, Henry. And someday you might be strong enough to carry it. Maybe. Oh, Edgar. Come on, Edgar, cut it out. You were little once, too, you know. Just kidding, just kidding. Oh, here comes Willie. Hi, everyone. Hi, Willie. Hello, Willie. What's happening over here? Nothing yet. We're trying to think of something to make with these boards. Hey, what about a treehouse? Oh, that would be fun. We could see the whole neighborhood from a treehouse. We'd have to climb way up there with the lumber. Oh, yeah. I didn't think of that. Maybe we could build it with wings and fly it up. Oh. Hello there. Lovely day, isn't it? Hi, Cynthia. Where are you going? I'm taking Betty for a little walk. Are you doing anything interesting? Not yet. We're thinking maybe of building a tree house. I know. Why not make it into a regular house and play right here on the ground? Oh, I love playing house. Well, I don't. Me neither. I wish we could think up a whole new game. How about it, Willie? You're good at thinking up new ideas. You know, I might have an idea. What? What is it? What? Remember on TV or the news when they set up the Skylab? With the astronauts? That's right. Well, how about building a Skylab of our own? Hey, a that's not a good idea. It might even be more fun than house. And we could be real explorers. Space explorers. It's perfect, Willie. Well then, let's shape it like this. Oh, yeah. Then we can really slice through the air. All right, everybody. Here's some more wood. Let's start building. I'll start on the inside. you mean. Something round would be nice. I know. We could take the wheels off my old tricycle. Good idea, Henry. Go get it. There, that does it. What are you doing, Edgar? Making a heat shield. A heat shield? Wrap us up in that and we'll bake in there like a potato. Gee, it seemed like a good idea.
Now if we connect your handlebars to this rudder, we'll be able to steer the ship. Hey, I'm trapped. There's no way to get out of here. No way out? Oh, no. Some builders we are. We forgot to put in a door. Don't worry, Cynthia. I'm coming with the saw. There, we're all finished. Boy, doesn't it look great. It's just beautiful. Look, here's a picture of the first sky lamp. Oh, yes. It's just like ours. I'm going to tack it on our wall. I figure it should bring us luck. And out there in space, we're going to need all the luck we can get. But wait a minute. Wait just one minute. How are we going to take off? Take off? I thought this was just a game. But even if it is a game, we've got to plan for a takeoff, Cynthia. Yeah, and that's a problem with all of us weighing down the ship. How about a big balloon? Sooner or later, Henry, balloons always pop. Kites might work. We could take all of our kites and tie them onto the roof. Nice idea, Eleanor. But what if the wind stopped? Oh, yeah. Well, we've got to think of some way to get our Skylab off the ground. Otherwise, we really can't play the game. But what's the difference? Isn't this just pretend? Well, isn't it? To be continued. Next time, ready for blast off. Did you know that long ago and once upon a time? When we wanted to talk to our fellow man, we invented the drum. When we first wanted to make music, we invented the drum. When we marched in battle, we marched to the drum. and we worshipped, it was to the beat of a drum. When we were sick and ailing, the drum soothed and calmed us. And when we wanted to tell stories of long, long ago, the drum would be there to help us along. The earliest drum was made from a fallen tree whose insides had rotted away. made of clay or wood or leather or metal or bamboo. Sometimes it's round or square or tall, and most of the time it has no feet at all. In musical groups of today, all kinds of drums are mixed and matched sounds and rhythms from everywhere coming together. For you see, all countries, all cultures, all people share the drum. And move to its beat and listen to its call. Why don't you make a new friend, make a new friend, make a new Why don't you make a new friend, make a new friend, make a new friend?
of many parts, each part different, each beautiful. Our people come from nearly every nation on earth. Our customs come from many different cultures. And the language we speak, while mainly English, is filled with words loaned to us from a dozen different tongues. When we say tea, silk, or ketchup, we are using words loaned to the American language by the Chinese. When we say yam, cola, chimpanzee, or gorilla, we are using words borrowed from the languages of Africa. Domino. Cigar, banana, guitar, and parade are just a few of the words in our language that came to us from Spanish-speaking peoples. 
in Spanish mixed with Mexican give us such Chicano words as sombrero, rodeo, and bronco. The languages of the Native Americans of the South have given us the names for cocoa, potato, chili, chocolate, and many other delicious things. So the next time you say zebra, or avocado, or tea, or bronco, you are not only speaking American, but African, Native American, Chinese, and Chicano words as well. Real people, I'd like to introduce you to some real people. Real people. My name is Martin. Right now, my biggest wish is to get a pet snake. I've been trying to talk my mother into it. Martin, what is the matter? Nothing. Are you going to read the Dear Abby Cole? Why should I read the Dear Abby Cole? Is it funny? Have you read it, John? Well, um, yeah, I didn't notice it. Ah, uh, what's going on? Dear Abby, I am a 14-year-old girl who wants a pet snake with all my heart. My mother says I can't have it. I even have the money for an aquarium and have studied up on how to care for it. Please be a pal and help me convince my mother to let me have a snake, Michelle. Dear Abby, I am a 14-year-old girl who wants a pet snake with all my heart. My mother says I can't have it. Dear Michelle, your mother, like many others, is prejudiced against snakes. Oh, I see. Because she knows very little about them. Herpetologists say that a non-poisonous snake makes a wonderful pet, and you can be sure nobody will steal it. <laughs> so you found your boa constrictor. He's so big. Mom, he's only a baby. Well, how big is he going to be? Isn't he beautiful? Isn't he gorgeous? I named him Nigel. You'll love him. Martin, I'll tell you right now, never get to like that thing. But why, Mom? Why? Because he's not like other pets. He's scary and he's, he's different. Boy, are you prejudiced. You don't even know him. He's not in the aquarium. Nigel, Nigel, where'd you go? Look under the radiator. I don't see. Why don't you put a leash on him? Then you won't worry about him getting lost. Do you let him sleep with you? Of course not. That's some crazy pet. Mine's going to be even crazier, because I'm going to get a pony. Oh, sure. Yeah, sure. Mm. My mother isn't going to like this. She won't have to. She'll never see him. Yeah. yeah. Cats don't know, dogs don't know, because they never seem to leave you alone. But you can bark and you can meow. Get the picture, Nigel. Different vibes with different tribes. All right. I can go. Oh, it's tough. Come on. Better you any day. Hey, Martin, here's a new guy for the team. His name's Joe, and he lives on Mount Nevin. That's just, that's just, just really good. I'll be right back with you. I want to say. Okay. Hey, you didn't tell me he was black. You know, I don't like to hang around with them blacks. Don't be stupid. His mother's my teacher. And he's a real clear guy. He's got a snake for a pet. Maybe you'd like to see him sometime. I don't care. I'm just not supposed to associate. Well, maybe I could just take a look at a snake. You're not going to take a look at Nigel, because I'm not going to let you. I heard what you said. You don't have to do me any favor. Well, it's just that my mother... You can tell your mother you didn't associate with any black kids. So there! Well, I guess you won't get to see the snake after all.
Excuse me, you came to my school about a year ago with a zoo show, and um, you had a boa constrictor. Yes, I usually bring one along. Would you like to see it? Yeah. Oh, okay, come on. There he is. Are you interested in snakes? Yes, very. I have a bow of my own. I thought I could learn a little more about snakes. Sure you can. Take our bow, for instance. Now, this is a South American boa constrictor. All right, it'll grow to be about uh eight nine feet now the best way to handle him is when you're first picking him up grab him in the back of the head once he calms down you can let him go but always let your hands follow him he likes to be secure and feels nice you know what i mean feels very good to him now they eat rats mice best thing to do is keep them frozen in your freezer i'm sorry you uh got here a little late i have to close up now okay so i'm sorry mm. Where do you live? On Pleasant Avenue in Montclair. Hey, I'm not far from there. That's on my way home. You want to lift? Yeah, that'd be great. And maybe I could show you my boa, if you have time. Oh, yeah, well, I can spare five minutes or so. We're not trying to gang up on you. Just that we all feel the same way. A snake is a menace to the neighborhood. Well, then you are sort of ganging up on me, aren't you? Well, now we really want to hear your side, too. We know that nothing is ever all black and white. I know what you mean. It's just that I think my son should be able to have the kind of pet he wants, as long as my husband and I agree. Look, Mrs. Harris, we feel the same way. But can't Martin have a less dangerous pet? I'm deathly afraid of snakes. I know why you feel that way, because the snake looks so different. Martin's even accused me of being prejudiced. But all the best authorities agree that a snake is not a dangerous pet. But isn't it true that some snakes find their food by hanging in a tree and then grabbing an animal and squeezing it to death? Well, I don't know what happens in the jungle, but this one is always very well fed. Excuse me, it's my son. Mom, this Hi, is Scott honey. Richardson. Hello, Mr. Richardson. You're Hello. just the man I need. Could you please explain to my neighbors that a snake is not a dangerous pet? Sure, actually, I'd like to give all of you a little talk. Is there some place we could sit comfortably? Sure, let's go in the living room. Well, 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 right. 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 I just know I'm not going to be convinced. Oh, come okay. on, sit down, Mary. You might find it interesting. <gasps> oh, thank you. Uh, how about coffee, everybody? <laughs> Should I say como estas, like the Spanish do? For today, we're making a Mexican treat called guacamole. It can't be beat. Mexican-Americans throughout the states love guacamole. They think it's great. And so it is, as you'll soon see. So get in your gear and follow me. Two avocados, two avocados here, and one tomato, one tomato. My dear, I can hardly wait to have a taste of that delicioso avocado paste. We'll need two green chili peppers. That's true, but if you can't get fresh ones, canned ones will do. And it's a good idea to have a grown-up along just to make sure that things do not go wrong. Now, first, you have to peel the avocado. Then mash them up along with the tomato. Then chop up the roasted chili peppers, add a little salt, and mix up all the goodies together. Now what you got is a fabulous dish to serve with corn or potato chips. Mm. Mm. And when you have passed the guacamole around, you'll be so surprised at all the friends you found. For everyone loves a new taste treat, whether they're from Mexico or 18th Street. Another nice thing about avocados is the wonderful thing you can do with the pit. Just plant 
place it in water, then put it in the dark, and after some days, you'll see it start to grow. Then take the pit, plant it in a pot, and what do you think that you have got? The beginning of what will turn out to be a great and noble avocado tree. Make some guacamole, then plant a tree. Have you ever felt all alone in a big crowd of people? When you feel different or strange, or that most people are not like you, it is probably because you feel like you're in a minority. Being in a minority is like when you're the only kid in class who forgot to bring their lunch. Each of us is in a minority at different times in different ways. Children are sometimes surrounded by adults. Boys may be surrounded by girls. Or just the opposite. Even being surrounded by dogs and cats might make you feel you're in a minority. But if you learn what it's like to feel alone in a crowd of people different from yourself, then maybe you'll know how to make someone else feel less alone. Is Oreo your friend, Luther? Sure, Pee-wee. Is Hardcore? Yes. Mary Frances? Yes. Lily? Yes. How did you get so many friends? By being friendly, I guess. 